Dr. Kumar, so I, 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 I'm, I do a lot of transplant and there's, there's two recent transplant studies, the, the determination IFM09, you know, so I, I used to, I'll be honest, just about everyone I was recommending transplant uh, uh, in myeloma, usually uh, in first remission uh, uh, due to the prolonged PFS. I will say based off some of the, those two studies, neither showing a survival advantage uh, with some nuances involved with that. You know, my practice is starting to shift. So maybe the 72 year old patient with myeloma, uh, who I used to do uh, an auto transplant for sure, with Dara Revdex getting amazing long term outcomes. Uh, it's well tolerated, especially a standard risk patient. So, are you still, is your practice with transplant shifted at all, or how are you approaching that? Yeah, it has uh, shifted a little bit. I think you bring up a very good point about the overall survival. But, you know, another way to look at it is that you know, we are not curing anyone. So I don't think we are at a point where we can discard any therapies that we have in our uh, toolkit. So if you are, if you have a 72 year old patient and you are in really good shape and you can go through a stem cell transplant, that is one person who might actually think about doing the transplant now versus even collecting the cells and storing because it's quite likely, as you said, with the current detection therapy and transplant, they may be 78 before they might need the next treatment. And by that time, it would be totally uh, not useful. But having said that, you know, there was a study from the ASH meeting last year, which showed that people who are getting like the reduced doses of melphalan for transplant, which we often do in people over 70, um, they, those, they don't seem to benefit from a transplant. So one shift that has happened is that if you're an older patient or a slightly frail patient, whom I don't feel comfortable giving the full dose of chemotherapy, then I won't take them to a transplant anymore. Yeah, no, I, I agree completely. Where we used to, I think, kind of push it and we go, oh, we'll lower it. But with that recent data, I agree that if you're, if you got that gut feeling, I think we're pretty good as clinicians knowing when to make that decision.